let's first look at what makes up a drum and bugle corps. Each drum corps is a nonprofit youth organization comprised of up to 128 young adults, ranging in age from 14 to 22. The corps is divided into three basic sections, a horn line of approximately 68 brass musicians, 30 percussionists, and 30 color guard performers. Modern drum and bugle corps have descended from the military drum and bugle corps of the past. In the early 1900s, drum and bugle corps was introduced as a youth activity with many rotary clubs and boy scout troops providing youth with a safe and healthy environment. As the activity became competitive, the main focus of the drum corps shifted from simply keeping kids off the street to the enrichment and expression of their musical abilities. Drum corps today attracts people who are already experienced in their field and are looking to further their education, such as high school musicians, music majors, and semi-professional dancers. Through the efforts of the corps members and the staff, each Drum and Bugle Corps produces a 10-minute competitive field show that combines exciting musical compositions with movement and dance. To better understand exactly what a drum corps consists of, we can look at each section of a drum corps in more depth. First, we'll take a look at the horn line. Wayne Downey, brass arranger for the Blue Devils Drum and Bugle Corps of Concord, California, introduces the instruments in the horn line and explains how each is used in creating the musical arrangement for a drum and bugle corps. The brass section is composed of choirs, the top end, would be soprano bugles, which would be much like the trumpets that you see in any marching band. The middle choir, which we call the alto choir, in the Blue Devils is comprised of two different types of instruments, a mellophone instrument that you would see in any marching band, and a flugelhorn instrument that you probably wouldn't see in any marching band, but you would more than likely see in a big band. From the bottom, the contrabass is much like the tuba. The baritone instrument is closely related to uh, the trombone in relationship to what its characteristics, what its responsibilities are in the arrangements. And the euphonium is a big baritone, so it generates more of a deeper sound. First, you're going to hear the baritones play the melody itself from the beginning to the end of the shop. Secondly, we're going to add the alto voice to that to show you the counter-melodic with the melodic voice of the baritone. And finally, we'll add the sopranos with the contrabasses. Sopranos playing the melody, doubling the baritones, and the contrabasses setting that jazz walking bass line underneath. The percussion section of a drum corps is comprised of many types of marching percussion and melodic auxiliary instruments. Jim Campbell of the Cavaliers Drum and Bugle Corps from Rosemont, Illinois, explains further. Writing for field percussion is rather unique because there are so many performers on a single instrument. We have nine snare drums, five multiple toms, which is our middle voice, and as many as eight bass drums uh, at once at various parts of the show. We treat writing for the marching percussion instruments like we do in a choir, where the snare drums are our soprano voice, the multi-toms are our mid-voices, and the bass drums are our bass voices. In the front, off the field, are our pit instruments, our mallet instruments, which play the melodic uh, accompaniment or play harmonic accompaniment, and as well as just add, adding accents with cymbals and gongs. The middle portion of the Cavalier show this year is a combination of two works by Malcolm Arnold, Cornish dance and English dance. In writing this, I've tried to relate the different voices in the percussion to their parallel voices in the brass. And English dance in particular begins with the multi-toms 
basically playing what the middle horns do. And then the snare drums will play exactly what the sopranos play. has really significantly changed the face of the, the activity. Drum Corps first started with one bass drum and, and one or two snare drums and some cymbals. And today, we're using tune percussion concert instruments. We're borrowing from classical literature, jazz literature. We're borrowing instruments from world percussion, ethnic instruments, ethnic techniques. Percussion has revolutionized Drum Corps. The third section of a drum corps, the color guard, contributes to the visual impact of the show. They are, in a sense, the visual interpretation of the music. They accomplish this through the use of various visual props, the most common being flags and rifles. The most distinguishing feature that separates drum corps from any other musical art form is the movement of the performers on the field. This choreography, referred to as drill, acts as a visual representation of the musical program. continual metamorphosis of shapes that follow the mood of the music. For example, it is common to see angular drill reflecting intense passages of music. Curvilinear and flowing drill is typically used during softer musical moments. This constant movement has become very demanding in the past decade. The physical demands on the performers are extreme as they are required to accomplish many exhausting tasks at once. Let's take a look at this athletic aspect of drum corps. First of all, as you can see, we, uh, we have to put on the harness that all the equipment hangs from. On that harness, we mount on the front, a box that allows us to measure the amount of oxygen that he consumes. You can also see that underneath that harness, we put on a device for measuring the heart rate. On his face, he had a face mask that had a big snout on it. And that's what allows us to measure the total amount of air that he consumes. And we also pull a little sample off that runs to this box. So ultimately, that all gets transmitted to a receiver where we now receive the total amount of air he, he breathes, the oxygen he consumes, and his heart rate, and the number of breaths per minute. It didn't take long to see the physical demands placed on a core member during a performance. By the middle of the routine, Dave's heartbeat was up to 150 beats per minute, more than double his resting heart rate of 62. By the end of the run-through, his heart was beating at 190 beats per minute, and he was breathing over 100 liters of oxygen per minute, 12 times his initial resting rate. Those are the same type of numbers I would expect to see from very good athletes in the middle of a marathon. These kids are working very hard. Metabolically, they're, they're doing the same type of work 
as a, as a marathoner in one certain sense, but at the same time, you have to remember, he's carrying a drum that weighs in excess of 50 pounds. He has to play the music. He has to uh, stay in step. Uh, the, the number of things that they're dealing with while working at what we would consider as a very heavy workload uh, is just astounding. So just how are these shows put together? The season begins in the winter as each corps gathers approximately one weekend a month to audition and to begin preparing the musical and visual programs. When summer finally arrives, corps members move to the cities in which their corps are based. For about one month, they finish putting the show together and begin to refine it. Virtually every day of this month, with the exception of laundry days, is spent rehearsing. After this month of intense practice, each corps hits the road. For about two months, drum corps from all over the world travel by bus from city to city on a competitive national tour in which they continue to rehearse between shows. Nationals Week, usually held in a major NFL stadium, draws crowds upwards of 40,000 people. Nationals is comprised of three shows, prelims, semifinals, and finals, where the top 12 drum corps in the world fight for the top honor of Drum Corps World Champion. Throughout the nation, and the world. A growing number of young adults take pride in being an important part of such an exciting activity. The lessons learned through competitive drum corps extend far beyond education in musical pageantry. For the corps members learn skills that can be applied to everyday life. These lessons of teamwork and self-discipline, as well as many friendships made during the season, will stay with the corps members for a lifetime.